Yo, what up? This is D-Night, and you're listening to the Pardon the Interaction podcast. My, oh, my, we've had so much going on. Uh, for starters, in case you missed it, we've got a new addition to the Par and Pie family, Tara Dublin. Make sure you go follow her on Twitter at Tara Dublin Rocks. Also, pick up a copy of her book while you're at it. Make, make her day, The Sound of Settling. A very fun and interesting read compared to the things we talk about on this podcast. <laughs> But yeah, we're heading toward the do or die time for the 2024 election. Go ahead and hit up JoeBiden.com. Get that man like a dollar a month or something. Help his campaign staff up and get prepared to try and save our democracy. And make sure to grab like one other person you know and tell them about the podcast. Make sure they subscribe and tune in every single week. We got a lot of things coming up for you this year. We need all the support that we can get. So if you do your part and help us grow our audience, we'll do our part and help elect Joe Biden in 2024 and save American democracy. And this is the Part of the Interaction Podcast. Yo, what up? This is D Knight, and you're listening to the Part of the Interaction Podcast. Woo. Holy forking shirt balls, man. Um, obviously, the insanity never stops, especially in an election year. I've never seen anything like it. Um, you know, no, no one's ever seen anything like it, as, as Trump likes to say. Um, I guess, of course, the first place we have to start is uh, the $83 million man, and, and not because he's worth $83 million. Supposedly, he's worth a lot more than that. Nope. But he lost $83.3 million in the jury verdict against him in E. Jean Carroll's defamation case uh, against him in New York that concluded at the end of last week uh, the second of such trials, the first of which he lost nearly $5 million. Uh, the jury decided in, in this instance uh, because of a number of factors to hammer him in ways that he's never been hammered before uh, unless you count like being pegged in the bedroom uh, and you know no judgment we don't kink shame around here but just saying um, so so because this case was about defamation that occurred while he was president and because of the extent of the things of you know the extent of his comments in defaming E. Jean Carroll uh, the jury decided to award her uh, a significantly larger amount of money in costs related to reputation repair. $11 million in this case compared to $1.7 million in the first trial for comments that he made after he left the White House. They also awarded her $7.3 million for emotional harm for a total of a little over $18 million in compensation. Uh, the real kicker here being the punitive damages, because of course, E. Jean's lawyer was like, hey, look, bro just lost a trial already, and he already out here in the middle of this trial defaming me as we speak. What's it going to take for him to stop? How you going to make him quit? Like, how we going to force this dude to engage in some non-reckless behavior and show a little bit of self-control? and sit his ass down somewhere because he got millions of dollars and feel like there's no price tag big enough to make him do so. Uh, and this is one point in which his lawyer, Alina Haba, failed him in, in that Roberta Kaplan, E. Jean's lawyer, uh, asked if Donald Trump and his legal team would concede to the fact that everything that Trump said in his deposition in the New York fraud case was true. And they were like, sure, we'll go for it. And it's like, all right, well, here's Trump saying he's worth billions and billions of dollars. In fact, he was like, Mar-a-Lago is worth like $1.5 billion with like a capital B. Mar-a-Lago, you know, the one that looks like some kind of orange, pinkish Hotel 6. Uh, yeah, so when they conceded that ground, and Carol's team's like, hey, look, you know, look, jury, dude says he worth billions of dollars. He got it. He got a billion in Mar-a-Lago. Y'all gonna have to, you know, really hurt his bank account to make him shut the fuck up. And the jury was like, OK, cool. We gonna award you like sixty five million dollars in punitive damages because, you know, it's going to take a lot of money to get him to shut the fuck up. And that might seem like an excessive figure to you. Uh, but in terms of New York state law, like that is well within the realms of what is constitutionally allowable uh, as a punishment in, as far as puni punitive damages are concerned, like somewhere within the realm of four or five times. Once you get past that, 
Uh, you know, appeals court tend appeals courts tend to look at that as like hmm, a little bit excessive. Maybe let's knock that number down. But no, this is well within the guidelines, and also it seemed to have been the correct amount of money to get dude to shut the fuck up. Because even in the midst of the trial, Trump was out here saying and doing insane shit on his social media company, continuing to disparage E.J. and Carroll. And the jury was like, keep her name out your mouth. And you know what? After this verdict came down, guess what Trump did? Guess what he did? He ain't never going to believe it. He shut the fuck up. You didn't even think that was possible, did you? He didn't say nothing about E.J. and Carroll. No more. Well, except like, I think he read truth, uh, some article about E.J. and Carroll. It, it is the, regardless. The point is, is hitting Trump in the one place that he really cares about taking away the one thing that he really loves a shit ton of money is one of the few things that Trump responds to so it worked the jury made the right decision it's not going to get overturned he's probably not even going to appeal it because I I know a lot of you like to think that like oh these decisions get made about Trump but like he don't ever have to pay any real consequences he ain't never gonna have to turn over no money he ain't never gonna fork over this money E. Jean ain't never gonna get paid she gonna get paid dog and the reason why is for Trump to even appeal this verdict he would have to put up a bond and in this case he'd have to put up a bond amount of 120% of the judgment uh, which is around a hundred million dollars. Like I have to fork that over. Now I guess he could like get some kind of bond company to front the bond for him, and where he'd have to put down a deposit of like ten percent, and and the the bonding company would put up the hundred mil. But here's the thing, because his businesses are clearly engaged in a shit ton of fraudulent activity, ain't no bondsman about to put up a hundred million and trust Trump. It's just not going to happen. And you know how I know this? Because he couldn't find a bondsman to put up to $5 million from the last time. He had to pay that shit up himself. And beyond that, like, we're heading towards a decision in that Trump org fraud trial here anytime this week. Like, you, we could get that decision before you're even listening to this episode of the podcast. And if you think a $83 million judgment was crazy... Wait till you see this shit, man. I'm calling it now. It's going to probably be in the realm of $450, $550 million in disgorgement fees, possibly even more than that, uh, given that the judge has not only found the company engaged in persistent fraud, he's probably going to rule against the Trump org on uh, the rest of the charges. And and even beyond that, like the financial monitor that, that the judge, Judge and Gorham, put in place to watch over the Trump org over the course of the trial to make sure that they ain't breaking bad given the fact that once Letitia James brought the suit against the Trump organization you know what Trump did this is crazy so this is what Trump did he was like oh shit uh you know they're gonna try and liquidate my company and take all the assets and sell it off to pay these fees let me go ahead and like set up a shell company and then just move all the assets over there uh, outside of the jurisdiction of New York right so dude set up Trump organization (laughs) 2 I kid you not like he didn't try like like disguise it somehow and create some like creative or anodyne name it just doesn't he was like nah I'm just like take Trump org create Trump org 2 outside of New York move all my Trump org assets to Trump org 2 and be like voila I got away with it <laughs> Judge and Gorham wasn't having that shit so after that event the judge was like man we gotta calm that shit down let's put somebody in charge of Trump org make sure they can't do no crazy shit make sure they can't try and like evade uh, the the judgment in, in the fraud trial uh, by pulling some shady stuff make sure they ain't out here continuing to commit more fraud um and we got some bad news on that front and that's just how you know the judgment against the trump org is gonna go bananas Uh, so even with the monitor in place over the course of the last what three four months they still can't get they fucking act together because you know they out here doing first of all uh we know the books were cooked uh from from previous evidence revealed in the trial uh, against Alan Weisselberg, former CFO. 
and here's the thing with cookbooks like when you have someone come in out of the blue to monitor your financial situation and you've been out here engaging in the fraud like what you can't do is just be like all right voila well here's the real books because then you lose the trial because they got all the evidence with the fraudulent books at the trial and you can't be out here you know with the real books being like all right my bad we because then you lose the money right so you got to find a way to try and balance those books to make it seem legitimate and in this case make it appear as though it is in line with all the evidence that prosecutors received in discovery so like you got to do crazy things like i don't know make up loans and shit and that appears to be what the trump organization has done um, so they had a loan from from Deutsche Bank that was forgiven again. And this is like after Trump argued that nobody was hurt by his fraud, even though he spent like years arguing with Deutsche Bank over a bunch of money. And they just gave up on it, it was like, all right, cool. Well, then like you don't want to pay taxes on that loan forgiveness because that's basically income. So, you know, you had to have some negative numbers on the book somewhere uh, to balance out that number. And then. I guess Trump decided he was going to make a personal loan to his company and then boom, out of nowhere, you got negative $50, negative $50 million on the books, even though you didn't get your company $50 million. And now you, but, but your, but your books balance, like the numbers look legit and until you start digging and, and you don't have to pay taxes on that shit. So it's also tax evasion. Uh, yeah, it appears as though the financial monitor ain't happy about that. She let the judge know, like, hey, man, there's some shenanigans going on over here. And and also, like, just a number of other things, like failing to disclose certain things, not disclosing uh, things in a timely manner. And there's also the curious case of the financial disclosure forms, right? So, like, the thing they've been accused of is inflating numbers and then using these fake numbers on financial disclosure forms to get uh, loans that they likely wouldn't receive otherwise, you know, if these banks and financial institutions knew the truth about what the truck organization's books look like, uh, they'd be like, nah, bro, we ain't giving y'all shit. Well, it appears as though since the installation of the financial monitor, uh, the Trump org has changed the way they be doing business. They don't use them financial disclosure forms no more. You know, the kind where you have to like openly declare the value of your assets, uh, they stopped using that and doing business and instead are using some kind of forms where you don't have to disclose the value of your assets. Oh, you just eliminate the problem of misrepresenting uh, the value of your properties and such by just no longer declaring the value of your properties is a real in run uh, around the, the, you know, common sense practice of financial disclosures, I suppose. But yeah, that shit ain't going to work. Also, just like they're not doing any business in New York anymore which is just fucking bananas for a New York real estate company. Now, I mean, like, that's not to say, like, they have loans and they have properties that generate revenue and, like, they're paying down the loans and whatnot, but they're, like, not doing any new business. They're not taking out new loans. They're not buying new properties. They're not doing no new shit. Like, it's just stagnant. They ain't got no new deals coming in. Like, the art of the deal here is apparently don't make no deals. And then that way, you ain't got to make any financial disclosures and in that way hopefully you won't lose this trial as bad as you could otherwise if you were out here doing new deals with the same fake ass fraudulent information and just making a problem worse I guess I don't know uh, I guess they're hoping that like oh as soon as this trial wraps up we can get back to business as usual one problem uh, so side tangent here but it's relevant to the to the topic uh, so Martin Scarelli you, you may or may not know that name. It's like the the former uh, farmer bro. He also engaged in a metric shit ton of fraud. And New York was like, bro, we're taking your companies and we shutting that shit down. We're taking the business certificates. You're done in this town. Uh, that guy. So the federal government found that on appeal uh, that it was constitutional for New York to engage in such a practice where you shut down your that business and make it impossible for that person to engage in uh, business endeavors in that field ever again. And this is important because Letitia James, amazing lawyer as she is, saw that and sent a note over to Judge and Gorham was like, hey man, you know, they when they said it was okay that New York does this to Screlly, where we take away 
his license to operate in New York forever and ever. It's okay to do that same shit to Trump. So they are going to shut Trump org down. Ain't gonna be no more business in New York for the Trump family. Maybe Ivanka can skate, given that she managed to get out of this trial uh, based on like a, a statute of limitations because of some weird wonky shit where Trump and the kids didn't get in. Anyway, it's not important. Uh, maybe Ivanka can escape, but the rest of these fools ain't going to be able to do no more real estate business in New York forevermore, uh, or at least for some years, which is practically the death of the, of the Trump organization. Also, uh, so Trump apparently, at least according to his own account, has you know nearly $400 million cash on hand, which is a lot I'll, I'll give you that but also if you've got like billions of dollars in debt for one 400 million dollars really ain't that much that interest adds up quick when you gotta pay them loans down also it really really adds up quick when you gotta pay 83 million dollars in damages cause you couldn't keep your hands off of another a woman's vagina well there's really gonna not be enough money when you gotta pay nearly half a billion dollars in, disgor- in, in disgorgement fees because your company out here engaged in all kinds of fraud. Like, it's going to be difficult enough to, you know, rape, rake up the cash to pay off this $83 million. And like I said, if he wants to appeal it, he got to put a hundred mil up front. Um, so with whatever happens in the New York fraud trial, I assume that the financial monitor will be handling uh, the liquidation of Trump org assets in order to raise up enough money to pay off the taxes, uh, to pay the government their disgorgement fees, uh, to pay off the banks the money that they are owned. And I guess if there happens to ever even be left, I mean, any money left over, uh, you know, Trump will get them little pennies or whatever. But here's the problem. Like, again... It, it seems as though Trump is underwater with a number of these properties. Like the the properties aren't worth the amount of money that's left on the loans in a lot of cases. So the more you sell, the more money you owe. Rock roll, rock roll. Somebody better get a Lena Haba a Scooby snack because <laughs> she ain't she ain't gonna be able to afford a meal. Uh, when Judge and Goran gets done with their asses up there, because E.G. and Carol already took. Look, man, it, if if I was Trump, I would be extraordinarily frustrated with Alina Hava, because she was the one out here saying, like, you know, if I had to choose between being intelligent and being beautiful, I would choose being beautiful because I can fake intelligence. Bitch ain't never heard of makeup and plastic surgery. Like if you got a lot, if you got a lot of intelligence, like you can make a whole lot of money and you can like buy yourself some good looks. You clearly made the wrong decision here because your lack of intelligence cost this dude a hundred million dollars. <laughs> I would be upset. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's all going bad for, for Trump financially. Um, this is probably the end of Trump orgs, probably, probably the end of like Trump having money as we know it. And it's, it's some weird, it's just, I don't know, man, it's crazy. Oh, the shit we're up to in 2024, man, it's just as wild as 2020. It just, it's impossible to leave. I mean, thank, to believe it, thank God Biden is the president, like stable, common sense, non insanity going on in the White House gives us the opportunity to bleep, to breathe and like collect ourselves because uh, man if Trump was still in office it would be even more bonkers than this like just cleaning up after Trump cleaning up after four years of Trump took four years and we still ain't done yet it's wild it's wild but yeah also we had Peter Navarro like he got sentenced for totally flouting his congressional subpoena from the January 6th committee uh, you know I just like bad decision after bad decision on their part like hey man just show up or turn over some documents or even like pretend to try and cooperate and then he was just like nah bro but he was out there on Ari Melber show confess- confessing to engaging in some cool like behavior <sighs> I'm glad these dudes are finally seeing the consequences of their actions it, it took long enough and I'm not blaming any one individual for that it was a 
the, the collection of unfortunate circumstances and bad behavior by Trump's people and like not having the opportunity to clean up after them in such a fashion where this stuff could have been moved along faster. It's just like because Trump was president, he had the opportunity to engage in some shenanigans that just made it far more difficult after he left office to hold him accountable. And it was just going to take a lot of steps in between him leaving and getting to the point where we are now to get to the point where we are now. It just, it is what it is. Like that's the cost of letting Trump in the white house in the first place. He was going to wreak havoc and create a mess. And it's just hard to clean up, especially, you know, when, when a dude has all the levers of power and all the bad behavior that he can engage in. Uh, it's just, it is what it is. Like, don't blame Eric Garland. Like, yeah, he sh- maybe could have moved a couple months faster, but he's he's been at it. And you know how I know he's been at it? Here's the thing. So you may or may not remember Scott Perry, uh, a representative, I believe, from Texas, who had his phone seized by the DOJ a couple years ago. Uh, you know, it seems like, oh, what, like what's taking so long? Well, again, you know, when you're a member of Congress, there's this little thing called speech or debate clause in the Constitution that, that tends to typically give members of Congress uh, a level of insulation, if not immunity from criminal prosecution for things that uh, endeavors they engaged and as part of their congressional duties. Now, I know you're going to say, like, attempting to overthrow the government is part of your job. Yeah, I get that. I get that. But, like, sometimes in things like search warrants and seizures, uh, it is difficult to have the Department of Justice or other law enforcement agencies get access to the seized information. And it tends to be a huge legal fight over that. Well, all that shit with Scott Perry's phone finally got worked out a few months ago DOJ was like all right we we got this shit uh and you know we got to figure out what the next steps are like from now we have all these leads potentially from Scott Perry's communications where do we go now where do we go from here what's the next step uh well it seems as though the next step was going after the other fucking members of congress who attempted to overthrow the government in 2020 and on January 6 2021 because On the House floor the other day, uh, it was announced that Congress had received a federal subpoena from the Department of Justice. Sounds like another rut roll moment to me. And if you really concentrate and you listen really closely, that sound you hear, that is the sound of all the Republican members of Congress clenching their buttholes. They scared, dog. And they should be. And that concludes this episode of Pardon the Insurrection.